Hello and welcome to Using Options as a Stock Investor. My name is James Boyd. We welcome all of you here this morning. Some of you have comment that, commented that Redhead's rule. That's true. Myself and Connie are going to take care of you here today. Now, when we talk about using options as a stock investor, so obviously the foundation is stocks. By the way, that could be ETFs as well, okay? Connie talks about that on Monday. Kevin, myself, or Ben talk about it on Friday. That could also be a part of this. And Connie talked about that yesterday, okay? How options could be used for those products as well. Now, when we talk about options here today, we're talking about cover calls, cash secured puts, okay, verticals. Those three main strategies are probably represent a big percentage of how an investor might use options at to complement a stock investor. Okay. So we're going to be talking about options as for protection maybe leverage and speculation and so on, and, uh, and also income. Now, as we get started, remember that options carry a high level risk and are not suitable for all investors. Also understand that this webcast discusses technical analysis. There's other approaches that we talk about, like on Wednesday, talk about, we talk about fundamental analysis, may assert some different views. Also remember that investing involves risk, including loss of principal. And when we talk about examples, they are just that. Short options can be assigned at any time up to the expiration, regardless of the end of the money amount. We're talking about American options, okay? Not European. And uh, as we do, normally in this class, we have a set agenda of what we cover. We talk about market sector and the two portfolios. We'll talk about new and then past examples. Now, last week, I wanna show you this. So let me bring this up. So first, first off, if you're not aware, this is not a one-off class, okay? So you can find us on YouTube. Our channel is called Trader Talks Schwab Coaching Webcast. You can just type that in. So if you went to youtube.com, okay, just type in Trader Talks Schwab Coaching, you get to this page. In the middle of that page, it will say subscribe. You want to do that so you can see all of our content. Now, one of the reasons for getting the content is we also have playlist, okay, which is right here. And the reason why I'm bringing this up now is because last week we talked about exiting positions and new positions. Last week, we, we had an opportunity to exit many positions, and we talked about how to rebuild the portfolio or portfolios, okay, from last week. And we spent some, about two, three days working on that, and you know we've been diligent in doing so. So you could go back on previous classes and look and just grab these. These are like, think of it as TiVo, okay? Now, uh, by the way, those other playlists, if you subscribe, you'll see the playlist right there. And you're also going to notice that we have other playlists as well, okay? Quick reminder, and I get this question a lot. So when you subscribe, you're going to see a little search feature. If you said, hey, I would like to learn about cash secured puts on this channel. Well, when you do that, it pulls up anything on cash secured puts, okay? I think a lot of people are kind of not seeing that, okay? When you subscribe, you do see that. And then it's going to just go through our whole entire channel, pull up anything on that topic. You could type in analyze uh, tab. You could type type in scans, anything, okay? Diagonals, calendars, whatever. Make sure that you use that. It's there for your taking. Just reach out and grab it, okay? Now let's talk about where these markets are here today. So first off, I like to look at a list of these to kind of get a sense of what I'm probably gonna see on the charts. Here we are on the indexes on the market watch, okay? So first off, I'm gonna highlight the indices, SPX, NDX, RUT, okay, there they are. If I look at the Dow, okay, trend three, okay? We also look at, let's say, the Russell, that's showing trend four, okay? So that tells us we could be up near an area of resistance. Want you to notice that, okay? Notice also in the last, let's say, 10 days or so, sp specifically the last five days, Little softening for the Russell so far, okay? NASDAQ trend three, price above both moving averages, not an area, not at an area of resistance right now, confirm that, and the SPX. Now we always kind of joke, but some of us are serious. Trend three is when those stocks are typically making those bull flags, okay? If you kind of notice when you tend to do the best, <laughs> it's what when they're in trend three, okay? Now, when we look at the Dow Jones itself, 
Now, by, by the way, the relative strength RS, we're comparing performance compared to the S&P 500. Dow's been quite strong, okay? Uh, the NASDAQ in the last little bit has been quite strong, and the S&P is relative to itself. That's why there's not any color or numbers there. That's the benchmark. So the standout right now is the Dow Jones and the NASDAQ. Now, when you take a look at the Dow, the Dow Jones, and I know you're sick of this, okay? How many times have we said that there's a new high? I think it's over 40 times this year the S&P 500 has hit a high. 40 times, okay? Now, if I look at, let's say, the SPX, okay, that's not a new high, but my gosh, we are close, okay? And if you look at that, little bounce on that 20 period upward trending moving averages. These are all moving averages. Okay, a little bounce so far. Red candle from where it opened, okay? So down slightly, but kind of more neutral. Now, if we take a look at also the NASDAQ itself, what does that look like on the chart? We might argue with kind of what we saw on the script. We might kind of say maybe is the NASDAQ in the area of resistance. That's why you want to confirm. We could say it's trend three, yes, but we might even argue and say it looks kind of more like trend four, okay? Notice when we zoom in on this, same thing we saw on the, on the S&P sell-off intraday so far, little bounce back up, okay? Now, where we kind of saw some movement overnight was in the uh, ch Chinese market. They cut 50 basis points, okay? And they did a massive amount of stimulus, okay? You don't ever fight the Chinese dragon, okay? And some of those, uh, when we take a look at, let's say, some of the commodities, which I think kind of is apparent, we'll start with gold first, okay? Gold up 17, oh, excuse me, Apologize, price moved on us. It's up 18, okay, 1760. Now, we'll talk about that more on Thursday. We also see on silver, I want to kind of keep an eye on silver. And by the way, you might be thinking, what does this have to do with using, using options as a stock investor? Well, what we see on the commodities can influence the stocks. Then what happens on stocks can influence the options. Okay, that's what we're talking about. I want us to keep an eye on silver. If you take a look at silver, it's maybe trying to show maybe a potential breakout setup. And if you look at this on a three-year weekly chart, you're going to see two weeks in a row where we see an intraday, intra-week low, I should say, because it's a weekly chart, okay, and an intra-week touch right on the 10-period moving average. Now, I think people have made this way too complicated, okay? When people talk about, well, how can I see momentum? Okay, one main answer. If the price is above the 10 period moving average, the end. You are seeing momentum at that time. What search, what scan, what watches? You don't need any of that, okay? If you pull up a chart and that stock is above the 10 day moving average, at that point in time, you have bullish momentum. Do not make it more complicated. If you do, you're probably confused. You don't have to, okay? We've always been using the same definition. The price is above the 10-day moving average, momentum. If the price is below the 10-day moving average, bearish momentum at that point in time. Okay, don't make it more complicated. Okay, I don't know what you're getting out to make it more complicated. Okay, I, so let's just make it, try to make it simpler. Okay, can we all be friends here? Okay, good. Now, the biggest thing is it's not just in silver. I think this is probably one of the main charts we're going to be watching over the next couple of days. We know gold's been strong. But silver, we're going to come to a sector in just a sec, and stocks that are in that area. This is why we're bringing it up. When we also look at copper, okay, and you take a look at this and you say, what does this have to do with using options as a stock investor? Well, if we have silver and gold and copper going up, what sector is that related to? Healthcare? Eh. Utilities? Denied. Uh, uh, financials? Nope. It's basic materials. So when you're doing your homework, your due diligence, and you're looking at the indices and some of these commodities, they're tipping the hand as far as what sectors you're going to be really be seeing, okay? Now, co copper had sold off pretty aggressively. We've had a moving average cross. That was Aug August 26th, and a little intraweek bounce on copper as well. Now, would it be a shock to you now? 
that if I pulled up IXB, which is the basic material sector, would you be shocked that it hit a brand new doink high today? You shouldn't be, okay? Now, the question now comes up is, you need a special searcher scan. You don't need a special searcher scan. You can go right to what Ben and I talked about yesterday. We can go to Market Watch, and we can go to Visualize, okay? Now, this is a way to visually scan, okay? We don't need anything complicated. If we go to Market Watch, and I go to, let's say, the Visualize, and we go S&P 500, what you're now going to notice is we've got a little crop down here in the bottom right-hand side. I'm down here at the bottom right. If I click on, for example, that bottom right, okay, or I could open this and go right to materials, it's going to expand that section. Let me show you that. So we click on the S&P 500, okay? Where's materials? Follow my cursor. It's all the way on the right. Why is it so small? Because it only re represents 3% of the S&P, okay? If you expand this, it's going to show you materials. And now it just zoomed in. So we now you tell me what stock we're probably going to look at. Which one we're going to look at? And here's the thing: don't just sit there and watch me do it. This is called this is called come come to this class and look to apply what you know. Okay. So tell me which one we're going to look at. We already saw gold. We saw silver. We saw copper. Any of these stocks have anything to do with any of those? Talk to me here. Okay. Kevin says FC. Oh, my gosh, Kevin. Okay, so let's take a look at this just real quick. Now, by the way, when I look at these, okay, FCX, let's take a quick look at what we have. Now, remember, we are looking for stocks above the 20 or 30-day moving average because that's the proxy for trend. And we're looking for the price above the 10-day moving average because that's the proxy for momentum. Okay? Now, does that guarantee if we find one that the stock is going to go up? No. No. That just says it's trending and maybe has momentum at that point in time. Now, if I looked at, let's say, the weekly chart, the three-year weekly of this, it kind of looks similar to what we saw with copper. Matter of fact, we could even overlay copper. And for example, we might see a similar line to the candles that we have, right? Now, if I looked at this and I were to draw a diagonal line of resistance, you're going to see that on the weekly chart, not daily, that this is a little breakage of that diagonal line. Okay, interesting. We go back to, let's say, now, by the way, on that, on that kind of before we got that, a little one touch, two touch, and a little crossover. Yeah, I like to make it more complicated. Well, how's it working out for you? Okay, you don't have to make it more complicated. Okay, so if we take a look at this, a little crossover. Okay, that crossover, double bottom, leading to a diagonal breakout. More confirmation of trend reversal. We go back to the daily chart, one year daily. There she is. Now, yesterday, what did I talk about? What was the word of the day yesterday? What was the word of the day? I'll give you a hint, okay? It started with C. And I'm gonna give you a vowel, okay? What was the word of the day? Now, if you if you don't tell me, it's going to really hurt my feelings. Okay, now trade number one, okay, trade number one, we're going to use what we talked about yesterday. Now, if you said, James, can I get an L? Ding. Okay, good job. Uh, James, can I get an F? Eh. Okay, what about an H? Okay, fine, we'll take that. James, can I get another vowel? I'm in a great mood. Absolutely. Let's put a little A there for you. And James, can I get an M? Eh, no, it's channel. Okay, now what does this have to do with anything that we talked about yesterday? Well, take a look at this. And it kind of looks like what we did yesterday. Okay, now here's the funny thing. You don't need a new idea every day. Okay, it would be a good idea to practice what we talked about yesterday and say, how could I apply it today? Okay. Now, what you're gonna notice is we had a channel and we broke out of that channel. And we talked about measuring the width of the channel on top, measuring that width, which is about $6, add $6. That might try to get us to the top. We'll add $6. Where is it? Right there. And what you're gonna notice is that pretty much takes us to the old channel, okay? Now, here's the deal. We're too late. 
we're too late. Who said you're too late? If we actually go back and really look at this and say, how far are we off that horizontal line? 4.82%. The way we define if we're maybe a little late and if we would maybe consider doing a buy limit order instead, if we're more than 5% off support, we would probably say you're probably too late. We might consider practicing a buy limit order. Okay. We are at 4.82 right now. And by the way, this intraday candle was even lower. Okay. So when I go back and look at this intraday, it was at 3% above the resistance point. Okay. So there's been some opportunities here this morning. Now, what I'm going to do is we can kind of see this old level about right there. And if, by the way, if you missed the channel class from yesterday, okay, so if you missed that, and I, I, that would really hurt my feelings, okay, if you did not have that class. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this up just really quick. And what you're now going to see is I'm going to just bring this over, okay? So if you said, hey, I did not see that the channel trade from yesterday or channel class, there it is right there, okay? And I put that, so just kind of hold on to that right now. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do a trade here. Notice we're kind of poking our head through this old support, okay? Thinking maybe could we maybe try to go up to the top. Now, if that copper reverses, that silver breaks to the upside, and Freeport McMoran is in the business of trying to get those precious metals out of the ground, their revenues might be higher. Their earnings per share might be higher, and so on and so on and so on. We don't have, can't guarantee that, but that's the idea, right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a trade on FCX. First trade that we're going to do here, let's go to paper money. We're going to go to FCX. We'll talk about the accounts in just a moment. FCX. Now, I want to ask you a quick question. If you saw FCX and you said, well, look, what's the width of this channel? I mean, maybe how much more might it try to go? Well, it's going to be about $51.93. It's about four bucks. What type of strategy might you consider? $48 stock, okay? $4 point move from top to bo from bottom to top. Volatility at 37%. IV percentage, where are we at? It's only at 29, okay? So I kind of gave you kind of some uh, background there. What type of trade might you consider? Now, some investors, they might say, James, I might want to maybe buy some calls, okay? Or buy a call, okay? So if someone, well, let's do this, okay? We did this with IBM before it worked out. Let's see if it can happen twice, okay? So let's say the investor says, look, I want to buy a call. And by the way, we're going to do both sides, okay? If someone said, look, I just want to buy a call by itself, well, you can buy a 48 call. They're about $2. You buy the 48 call, they're 2 bucks. The break-even and expiration on that is just going to be what? Well, 50 bucks. okay? If we're above $50 at expiration, we have intrinsic value. At the end of the life of the option, the option becomes worth its intrinsic value. So if we're at 52 at expiration, the options are worth at least two. If we're at 53 at expiration, the options are worth at least three, okay? So what we're gonna do in this example is we're gonna buy a call. Now, if this stock goes up quite a bit more, that call might be worth something more than what we're anticipating, the biggest thing about this trade, it's unlimited upside. The con, it's affected by time decay and implied volatility dropping. Okay, so those are two kind of headwinds for it. We need the stock to go up more than those other two Greeks pull it down by, by time decay and volatility. So we don't want the move to be slow we want the move to be fast so we can outpace or try to outpace the time decay. So trade number one, we're going to buy a call, one contract there, okay? Now, what we're also going to do is we're going to come over on the put side. And on that put side, what we're going to do is we're going to sell the put. 
Now, when you sell the put, you get to select A, you might pick uh, the strike that you select by Delta, which is really looking at probability of the stock being in the money, okay, at expiration by a penny. So if we sold the 48, the chances of the stock to be below the 48 by a penny, 44%. As of right now, these numbers are dynamic, okay? If we said, geez, I don't, I'm not really sure if I want to be that close. Maybe I want to sell, for example, these ones. Well, the problem with those ones is there's no open interest. If you did get filled, you would be the first in the world to buy to sell that one or buy it. We're going to go to this uh, 47. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to do, let's say, one contract in the margin and probably about three or four in the IRA. Let's do that, okay? Now, notice here, if we took a look at the 47, we have about three cents bid ask spread, open interest about 436. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to confirm and send. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this in both accounts. Multiple accounts there, okay? Margin, we're gonna do one. Now, wait, wait, why are you doing one? Well, the reason why we're doing one is if because we're uh, we're gonna assume that we're assigned to buy 100 shares at the strike price, which is $4,700 worth of stock. If we buy $4,700 worth of stock on a portfolio at 68,500, that is about 7% of the capital of the account, okay? This is not what do you wanna do, this is adhering to position sizing rules, okay? You're on the same page? So if we sold more than one contract in the margin, we would be going over that position sizing rule limit, okay? Now, on the IRA, if we did this, sold, let's say, three of them, we could really go almost four, we'll go safely three. That amount, again, is gonna be below the limit of what we could in the IRA. So if we just sell puts, four in total, one to the margin, three to the IRA, what we're gonna do is we're gonna send the order, okay? Now, I'm gonna go back to charts for just a second. And what I wanna do is I wanna overlay something, okay? Now, I don't know if you like this, but I'm kind of like a nerd on this topic. I love to see how things are correlating or have correlated, okay? We're gonna to go to studies, add studies. We're gonna go down to compare with. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, for example, that copper symbol. Now, what you're gonna notice is the FCX is the candle chart. When I type in HG, that is gonna be a line chart, okay? So what we're gonna look for is, is there, let's say, a relationship with copper and FCX? So if the lines are going in the same direction, and you're gonna see right here, in purple, it's copper. And it looks like when copper went up, so did FCX. When copper went down, so did FCX. So did FCX. And when copper started going back up, lo and behold, so has FCX. So it's nice to kind of see those relationships. That's not surprising because FCX does not sell soap. They're selling precious metals. They mine it and they sell it in the market or in the futures market, okay, both. Now, if we go back and take a look at this, okay, now what I wanna do here is I also wanna go back to one other example. So did we run a hard scan? No, we did not. We went to market watch and we went to visualize. And when I pull up, for example, now, by the way, we could do one thing here. When we pull up, let's say the sectors, okay, how would I have maybe known to look at the base materials? Let's say I didn't look at gold and I didn't look at silver and I didn't look at copper. I didn't do my index list, okay? Now, by the way, if you say, well, what index list do you typically look at? This is our list here that we normally will look at to kind of see what's happening in the marketplace, okay? There you go. That's a list of indices. That's kind of what we use, okay? Now, what I want to do is let's go back to the market watch for just a sec. Quotes. How might the investor know? Let's say they didn't have those lists. And they said, James, I pulled up the sectors. How would I have known 
that maybe, let's say, which sector was stronger. Okay, well, so here's the sectors, okay? And this is not a, like a new concept here. All of them are in trend three, except for healthcare. Boo, healthcare right now, okay? So of all the sectors, still pretty strong. When we go back and say, are there any sectors that made a brand new high here today? Answer, yes. What was it? Well, discretionaries. We said this last week, it's going to be very difficult to get a recession if discretionaries are hitting a brand new high. Heard us say that, right? The second one we actually noticed that's also hitting a short-term and intermediate high, basic materials and industrials. So, frankly, what you should hold yourself responsible and accountable for is, did you do the due diligence, okay? The secret of your success is hidden in the daily routine. What are you doing daily? Looking at the futures, looking at the indexes, gives us some insight what we're going to be likely going to be seeing on, let's say, uh, the sectors. And what we see on the sectors is likely going to be like what we see in the stocks. What affects the stocks, then it actually could affect potential option setups. Now, I want to go back to just real quick, uh, when we talk about one other one, I'm going to speak to this industrials for just a moment, okay? We talked about basis materials. I want to give you a homework assignment, okay? I want you to go to that market watch visualize, and I want you to, when you click on the S&P 500, you open that up. I want you to look for one or two other examples in basic materials. Now, if you write me and say, hey, can you show me a scan for uh, how to find stocks in the basic materials? No, I want you to look at these. The reason why these are important is because these are the ones that meet the standard, the requirements to be on the index, okay? And we're looking for companies that are more proven than some miscellaneous mining company in the middle of Ecuador, okay? We're looking for proven businesses and scale, volume on the stock and the option, okay? Now, what I wanna do here is I wanna go to industrials, okay? Now, if I do go to the S&P 500 and I say, well, what about those industrials? Tell me what you see in industrials. What stocks stand out in industrials here today? Okay, look, and I'm telling you, uh, and I, by the way, I appreciate your questions, but sometimes uh, I, I think when I read the questions, it's, it's we're trying to make it too complicated and it, it wasn't meant to be that complicated, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the industrials. Now I'm gonna ask you a specific question. Do you think you can go to Market Watch Visualize? Do you think, and tell me if you can't, okay? That's why we're here. Go to the S&P 500. Do you think you can pull up a list, okay, of stocks? Now here are the lists. These are all, this is the sector of industrials. But what is this? Airspace and defense stocks, ground transportation stocks. These are industry groups in the sector of industrials. Tell me what stock you would look at. Tell me what stock you would look at, okay? Speak now, forever hold your peace. <laughs> okay, now we're about ready to cut it loose. So here's the deal. It'd be hard not to see Caterpillar, the big, huge square showing the, the market cap size. It would also be pretty tough not to see CMI, okay? Or Uber, okay? among others, okay? Now, we got also GE as well, fair, you could do that. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up a little kitty cat, also known as Caterpillar. Now, what do we see on Caterpillar? Now, I'm starting this, we're looking at the daily chart of Caterpillar. What do you see? Well, it kind of looks like a little continuation, okay? Now, what you're now going to see is kind of have a 327 low, kind of some uh, kind of upper end maybe of that channel. That's another airline of resistance. You really kind of have this top part, which we've now just blown through, okay? Now, if we look at this on the weekly chart, what do we see on the three-year weekly? Uh, a continuation pattern? Ding, 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 ding. Now, I, I can hear it already, but we're too late. Okay, you should have a t-shirt that says I'm always late, okay? Now the biggest actually thing is this, how do we know we're too late? 
Did you measure how far we're off the support level? Okay. No, I just kind of, it looked like it. It's That's not good enough. We got to look and kind of see. Let's go back to the one-year daily. Let's zoom in on this. How far are we above that 10-day moving average? Answer, I don't know until I measure. And if we go back and look at that, we're going to see that we're about 2% off your 10-period moving average. Now, remember, I gave an easy definition. How would I know if there's momentum? What was the answer? How would I know if there's momentum? Well, price is above the 10. Visually, what would it tend to look like if there is momentum? Answer, you should probably see if the stock does pull back, that the stock pulls back one to three days only to see the stock go higher again. That's another visual sign of momentum. That is what we normally see, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the trade tab, okay? Now, Caterpillar, note, is a bigger stock, noted. Now, how many searches or scans did we run to find these trades? We didn't, okay? We were just looking at top-down analysis, looking at sectors. If the sector broke out higher, we pulled up the market watch, visualized, and we went to the ones that kind of met the standard for being on the index. It probably tells us something about stock liquidity and company uh uh, company track record. It also, if the stock has higher volume, two million so far here today, it kind of has a better chance, not 100%, that they might have more liquid options. And I cannot stress to you this enough. If you get outside the Dow 30 stocks, the NASDAQ 100 stocks, the SP 100 stocks, and the SP 500 stocks, if you get outside those lists, be very careful about liquidity. There's a reason why I teach from the indexes themselves, the stocks in the indexes. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to sell a put vertical, okay, on Caterpillar. Now, SGS asked the question yesterday regarding, like, kind of the differences between a long call vertical and a short put vertical. I want us to think, too, break even, okay? So if I came over here and said, I'm going to do a 385, 390 long call vertical, okay? We get a break even at 387.55. The stock has to go up somewhat just to break even. The way we make $245 given this vertical is we need to be above both strikes. So this is break even. That is not maximum gain. Maximum gain is only achieved if the stock is above the 390 price. So that means the stock has to move up more just to even make that maximum gain. Okay. So break even, okay, and maximum gain. Maximum profit is achieved if the stock is above 390. Maximum loss is achieved if the stock is below the 385, okay? So to get this bigger gain, you need the stock to move, okay? Now, let's flip this. Let's say we said, geez, I, maybe, maybe I don't want to do that. I want to come over here to the put side. You do sell vertical. And if we sold the 380 and bought the 375, the credit is not as big. The credit is the maximum gain. And if we take a look at that, on the long call vertical, it was a maximum gain of $255. But to make more, the stock had to move up more just to break even and to get to that maximum gain. But notice the difference here, which is significant. Okay? Stock is at 387. The break even stock price is at 378. So this stock could go down $9. Okay? Down $9. And we could still be at break even kind of nice, okay? Now, how do we make the 100% of the maximum profit? Answer, you got to close above the 380. How do you make the maximum loss? You close below the 375, okay? So if you want to kind of give some room of margin of error, which trade is more forgiving? Answer, short put vertical. Lower break even, okay? 
time decay also on your side as well, which then factors into the lower break even, okay? Now, what we're gonna do on this is we're gonna go back, we're gonna do this. Number one, we're gonna do this in the IRA. Uh, let's go back to just real quick. Multiple accounts, and by the way, I, as we talk about account performance, if you see me do things that break the rule set that we talked about on November 15th of 2023, I want you to just slap my hand, okay? Because if we talk about account performance, but we're cheating on the rule management of position sizing and so on, then it's not really that interesting. So the reason why we're doing in the margin account one contract is that would stay below that uh, dollar amount that we could lose. Now, on that portfolio of the margin, if we could, let's say, lose $500, okay? If we could lose, let's say, $500 in the IRA account, okay, so $500, that account is at $68,500, that would be seven tenths of 1%. I can't do two contracts, I can only do one, okay? When we go to the IRA account, if we actually say, look, we're gonna do three contracts, that account being what number? 287,500, we'll double check that. It's gonna be three and a half percent. We could push to four, we cannot do more than four, okay? If we lost 1352 on that account, it's gonna be almost a half percent. We're staying below the threshold. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do five short put verticals, okay? Now, what's the major difference between options and stocks? Well, number one is there's an expiration. That's massive. Two, you got a bid-ass spread, not just on the stock, but you got the bid-ass spread on both. Three, you actually are have, uh, you're influenced by the time decay and also the volatility, okay? Now, the difference between this trade and a stock trade, which one has more risk? The stock trade has more risk because the stock could go down to zero. If the stock went down to zero, we have the right to sell the 375 put as a way to cap the loss. That's kind of big as well. Now, how much money is it going to take to set aside to do this trade? Answer, it's about uh, $1,700, okay? to do five total contracts. We're gonna send the order and there it goes. Now I wanna go back to this for just a moment. Let's kind of speak to these accounts for a moment. So when we look at the trades we did, we did number one was FCX. We talked about that, we did a long call. We wanted something that had a limited upside. Then we took the opposite side of that, which is really selling the puts, which is more income based and probability based. Think, break, even. And when we take a look at the second trade we just did, which was also getting into the Caterpillar example, okay? Now, SGS says, uh, seam short put vertical is better than a long call vertical. So when you say better, what, it, what do you mean by better? I think we would use the word it's more forgiving and it just has a lower break even. But for that, there's a lower upside potential. With the long call vertical, there's a higher potential gain because the stock needs to move more to break even. So when you make more, there's a reason for that. If you make less, there's a reason for that, okay? Now, let me just speak to these two, two accounts and then we're gonna go to our, our third and final trade. So when we start these accounts, uh, November 15th, 2023, okay? We were at 45,000 when we started. We're at 68,768. Uh, we are at about 52% since November 15th of last year. Now, we got to compare that to something. What we've been comparing it to is the benchmark, the SP 500. The benchmark of the SP 500, that's, are you sitting down? Grab the chair handles so you don't fall off, okay, you ready? Since the time we started, the S&P 500 was up 27.34%. That's if you were 100% invested. This account 
typically is not 100% invested. So we're looking at the performance of 52% compared to 27%. You gotta remember though, if you bought the S&P 500, you had to be fully invested, buy and hold from then till now, okay? To get the 27%, okay? Now, on the IRA account, you're gonna now notice that we're at, literally sitting at 248,875. 248,850, we started at 185,000. We're at 34.5%. S&P performance, 27.34. And again, if we take a look at this, how much are we invested? We would say if we kind of took an eyeball and you watch this class week over week over week, we'd probably say on average we're about 50% invested of the IRA. And we're probably about 70% invested in the margin account. Okay, so just because we have the cash doesn't mean we fully invest it. That's going to be based upon what we do in classes and the opportunities we see in the market. So those are the updates there. Now, are there any questions? Okay. Now the now the question is, did he what what about the FTX trade? Uh, well, we didn't do the FTX trade. We did Caterpillar trade. Okay, that's what we did. Caterpillar. Now. I want to go back to also, now by the way, once we have this line on, how do we get it off? Right click on it, remove the study, and it's just going to take that line off. Now, I'm not going to do these, but just a couple other stock, two stocks in the industrials that does fill in the Caterpillar. Two stocks that I want to point out in that space that we're seeing a little kind of some bullish movement on. Uh, Eastman Kodak has been pretty, Eastman Chemical, excuse me. And then CMI. Many of you also mentioned that list. Keep an eye on those as well, okay? Uh, one other one that I would kind of say from the discretionary space that's been very bullish is eBay, okay? Been quite bullish, okay? Now, those ten, that tends to work better. I call this the electronic garage sale. And we all know we have stuff in our garage, don't we? Okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I want to kind of also just Say on this one, Nike, that is also one that's kind of breaking out of that prior high. Could it try to go up again? We're going to do a trade on that. But we're also, I just want to say the CRM, that did breach the 267. Keep an eye on that. And if you take a look at the Netflix, uh, you're going to see a little bounce on that. My gosh, there's so little time and so many well, I want to maybe do a trade on. I think for the moment, we're going to go discretionaries and we're going to choose Netflix. Now, I, let's say that someone said, I have a higher potential upside on Netflix, or the investor thinks it could go up. Well, what we're gonna do in this example, okay, is on this stock that's uh, $700, we're gonna right click on the 715. Now, don't look at my orders down below, okay? Don't look. The fact that we're sitting on this that has no bearing of what we're gonna do now, okay? We're gonna right click on that 715. We're gonna go buy, we're gonna go long call vertical. Now, if we did a long call vertical, what are we really thinking? Now, if I did a long call vertical, I'm thinking there's a greater chance we could be above a higher break even, and we want a greater, we, we wanna have a higher potential gain, okay? We did a short put vertical, lower break even, Okay, we talked about that comparison. Now, what's kind of interesting is many of you might say, well, James, I haven't been doing these higher price dollar stocks because I thought they were too expensive. Well, that's if you're buying shares. We're really doing a long call vertical, the right to buy and all the obligation to sell. How much money in an IRA would this really take? Answer, $265. You got $265? Okay. So if we looked at this, someone might say, geez, I kind of do. And then if what, if what if the stock goes down 100, 200 points? How much loss is it? Well, given the vertical, the loss would really be $265, okay? Spread is $5 less the debit. Whatever the debit is, that's the max loss. You got to remember, add the commission, okay? Now, last thing I'm going to say here is if we go to multiple accounts, how many contracts could we do in the margin? We could press two, but no more. 
if we, the threshold is 500 bucks, but if we add 30 bucks, it's not gonna be life changing, okay? Now, if I went to the IRA and said, okay, how many could we do? We could really do about four of them. Now, James, uh, the other ones we actually have, they're kind of still cooking. We're gonna add to these, okay? So this position down here below, what you're gonna notice is, one of the things I'm seeing that I don't agree with, and you should tell me, hey, this is not right. We have 100 shares of Netflix, which was assigned at 700. How do you know it was assigned? Because you don't normally buy things at 700.00, okay, or 100.00. So we need to lean that position down. We need to sell about 70 shares to get below the threshold. Now, got a little lucky here because that didn't know what was going on, gave us another $1,855. Now, not patting ourselves on the back, but to be responsible, okay, we're going to have to go in. And once we realize we made a mistake, okay, and it's outside the lines of what we talk about, we're going to have to sell 70 shares, okay, because that position is about a third of the portfolio, okay, and that's what I want to end on. We're gonna sell those shares. Now, by the way, what it's gonna do, it's just gonna be free up about $50,000 worth of capital. And it's gonna make it where we're not top heavy in one stock. And when we sold those 70 shares, which did get filled, it's gonna give us some more capital. So that's why that capital, that cash sunk so much. That trade did fill. So if we said, what trades did we do here today? Number one was FCX. Number two was Caterpillar. And number three was Netflix. Now I'm out of my time here today. I wanna thank Connie for answering those questions in chat. Remember with what we discussed, it was done for example, illustrated purposes only. Stay tuned for our next class coming up right after this on getting started with options. And uh, thanks to all of you, remember to subscribe. And uh, this has been the class on using options as a stock investor. Have a great day, take care. And stay tuned for Connie's class coming up this afternoon. Take care, bye-bye.